Hi, I'm Andy from FB Custom, and I'm going to show you how to take apart and paint your uh, Xbox One controller. First of all, let's take it apart, and uh, it's not too difficult. So the hardest thing is probably taking the sticker off. But, um, it's not too bad really. The Xbox 360 was a lot easier. But they always make it hard. It's nothing compared to PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4 controller. They're always a pain. So you've got five screws to undo after you take the, uh, the little covers off, the grips. So I should have taken a couple of these out before. Make it a bit quicker. Sticker is a pain to take off. Because you want to, once you paint it, you want to put it back on. It looks a bit more, looks better if you put it back on. Let's uh, get this out. I mean, some people just go through the sticker and ruin the sticker. Stick it up. I'll put that on a bit of back in later. There's your last screw, just there. Just take that one out. So then, well, there's one screw there. The front just pops off, and then there's the fifth screw. The back just comes off as well, though this is the one with the the uh, headphone jack at the bottom which makes it a little bit harder to get out so what you want to do if you've got this one normally the other one will just pop off if you've got the one with the the jack you want to just prise it off just be careful you don't want to break it you shouldn't break it just wiggle it off he says okay so so there's the core of it. If you want to take your buttons out, definitely if you want to replace your guide button, something like this, a lot of guide buttons, you have to undo these two screws, this bit pops off and then you just angle it and then you take the rest of the buttons out. Just bend them, bend them back. Just take the rest of the look, they're not T, T, T8, they're a T, I'll find out. I'll let you know in another video. You just take them out. They are a bit of a pain to get out, if I'm honest, compared to the well, definitely the 360. So easy to change the buttons in them. So there's, so there's your shell. Brand new shell, brand new controller. I just unboxed it. This was. And you see, so want to clip these back in because when you're painting, you want nice clean lines. Uh, you can take, you can actually take the. Uh, battery things out if you want. You normally I'll just tape over it because once you put that bit on the paint doesn't really get into it. It's just So just put a bit of tape over this. And that's that's the breakdown video anyway. So there's your there's your controller. Controller shell. And uh, yeah and then in the next part of the video I'll show you how to uh, paint it, prime it, paint it, lacquer it and put it back together. Okay. Right, I've uh, got the base colour on now. It's got two layers of green and three layers of primer, which was grey, this colour. It's just right on the line around. So yeah, it's got three primer on it. This was a brand these are brand new shells, obviously you saw me strip it down. But if you are using your old shell you need to clean it really well because it needs to get rid of all the all the the uh, grease and whatever crap is on your hands off. Uh, a good trick is to put it in the dishwasher. Obviously, don't put your controller in the dishwasher. Put the shell in the dishwasher. I'll say that. Right, we're going to make this into a monster controller. So here we are. We've got our stickers. Uh, we can sell these in big sheets if you're interested. What you need to do is Mask and tape. Put on there. 
make sure it comes off. This one I'm going to put right about there. Just... Yeah. yeah. Nice and simple. Work. Make sure you get the sticker nice and flat. So, yeah. Warm it up a little bit. Nice and slowly. Back on itself. Right. And then. That's it. See? Make sure the sticker's down nice. So, like this. And uh, all I did was, I've got an old can, um, just to turn the air paint. Bit of, what it is? Bit of um, masking uh, duct tape, loop around on itself, and then you stick it on. And I've seen other videos where they say, you know, like put on a bit of cardboard on flat. If you don't do that, you can't get the edges, and you won't be able to get these because you can see these. I mean, these aren't done properly yet because it's kind of different colour now. So yeah, all I do is just use a couple of old, and you know, it's quite strong. Duct tape. So we'll do the back as well. What's wrong? Being cheap, the masking tape. One. I don't know, just put it. Let's have one going like that way, I suppose. Okay, make sure the sticker's flat. Peel it back on itself. So, if you're interested in like the stickers, the well, we can paint masks. There you go. Um, we can do sheets. I mean, I'll be doing a fallout one today as well. So There's a fallout sheet. Um, what else I've got? I've got gears. Gears of War one. There's loads of them. What have we got? Black Ops. Rainbow Six logos. Um, so, yeah, that's what it looks like. I'll try and get, I'll get that one in the shop first. So, yeah. When you see them again, they have the top coat on. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably do like a darker grey, maybe a black, and I might splat some green on it just to give it that little, that little nice look. And then when you see them again, they'll be painted. And at the end, I might even show you the fallout controller. Okay, I'll be back. All right, so it's about five hours later, and uh, as you can see, so it's a sort of darker here. You can still see the green coming through. But, um, green splatter over it. Back's the same. So, um, what I didn't mention was when you do the primer, you want to do your three light coats. Um, you want to leave that for a couple of days just to make sure the paint's gone, gone off, gone hard. Same with the green. Because it's the only base coat, you don't have any stickers on it. You know, do it. Do a couple of light coats. If I mean, you could always just do green, and then you don't have to do all this. But obviously, one color controllers are fine, but ah, it's a bit boring. And then uh, you want to leave it a couple of days. So with this, once I've taken the stickers off, I'll leave it for a couple of days, just to make sure everything's dry. Well, I know it's dry, but it's gone all as it should. And what I'll do is at the end of the video, I'll show you what paints I've used to make this controller. What paints I recommend if you're going to be using spray spray paint. I am in the UK, so obviously this is aimed at UK people, but the same principles apply. I don't see why you can replicate this. There you go, it sticks off. To the back. Fallout 4 one still in there. 
it's got an extra couple of layers of paint so I'll show you I'll show you that at the end it's one of my favorite designs at the moment look it's fallout out it's quite new I mean I'm still playing it I've only played it once I know people have played it loads of times already I just like collecting power suits power armor sorry and there's the back So what I'm going to do, leave this to dry for a couple of days, nice warm place, just so it goes, the paint goes off, goes hard, and then it'll be clear coated six, seven times, thin coats, you don't want to go too mad because you don't, it will drip, you don't want that. And then uh, we will um, put the controller back together, I'll probably end up putting green buttons in and maybe a guide button. Um, yeah, and at the end of the video, as, as I said, I'll go through what paints I recommend you should use for this. And, uh, okay, right, I'll be in the next video. Right, so the shell is now dry. I'm taking it apart, taking the bits off. Got the controller stripped. Um, this is a different one than I stripped in the video before. Um, it doesn't have the, the jack. Because I sprayed the shells around the wrong way. <laughs> so this is the fallout control I did. I was doing it at the same time. And you can see it's got the jack. So I sprayed this I sprayed this shell. You'll probably see it in the uh, video of when I was putting the stickers on there. It didn't have to see actually have the hole for the jack. So yeah, that was my bad. But it's um well there's the fallout controller anyway. This one is mine, I am keeping this one. Um, well, I say keep, we'll see. Um, so yeah, the only difference is, it doesn't have a jack. But what I've also done is gone on eBay and brought, you know, a green set. So I'm going to show you how to fit this. And I've got one of our guide buttons, which is the monster. I'll show you what a pain in the ass it is to fit the buttons. So first of all, I've got the uh, screws on a magnet. So what you want to do is take all the other screws up. Now these aren't T. Oh God's sake! I can't remember what these. What is this? Is it T10? Can't remember what's this one. T7 apparently. Thought it was T8 and T10. Never mind. Take out all the other screws. The ones inside are slightly smaller. If you go on uh, eBay, just type in Xbox One uh, controller screwdriver and you'll find which ones you need. Uh, take the thumbsticks off. Thumbsticks are the easiest thing to change. Just put them off and then you just push the new ones on. You see this? Okay, these aren't, I don't think these are so good as the Xbox Ones. Yeah, they, they just push on. But we'll put that back on. So, actually, let's take the. So, first of all, you want to take the triggers off. Sorry, the bumpers. And then you want to. Pop something like that. And then the same one. Everybody's got their own way of doing stuff. This bit, push the button in and pull away from you basically. But make sure the sync button. Push the sync button down as well <coughs> so it comes out and then you're left with that. And then all you do is you push from the thumbsticks. Hold the back, push it towards you, and then you sort of put that way. Because unlike the 360, you can't just take the board out because of the rumble pads. I mean, some people take them off. I actually like I like I actually like the rumble pads. So just just keep it like that. 
take the rest out. So nowhere near as easy as the 360 was. And well, I don't do many 360s anymore. There's a couple different Xbox One controllers actually. So I think the other one's got one more screw. And this one's got one, two, three, four, five. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven screws on the inside. And all you do, make sure I've got more. No, miss one. Eight. Get rid of that. Eight screws on the inside. Make sure you get them all before you try and force the board. You don't want to break it. You've just broken your controller and it's not worth anything. So this one just lifts out. This one lays flat, so it's not easy. This time the rubbers come out with it. And the buttons are out. So with these aftermarket Chinese green buttons or whatever colour you're going to get, they're not as... I don't know, there's, there's little bits on them. I would recommend one when you're fitting them. Basically, just if you see anything that look, sticks out, just take it off. Because I mean, test fit it, make sure it works before you put the controller back together. Because you don't want to put the controller all the way back together and realise the buttons don't work. Been there, done that. Not fun. Uh, so just. I mean, there's a little bit on the back of it. These are just Chinese crap. But Xbox don't make anything for the aftermarket stuff, so. That's why I used to make my own buttons when it for the 360. So much better. I used to just mould the actual buttons and copy the, their ones, but it's just not worth my time doing that anymore. Not people won't pay the extra for these, so. So I just that's why I buy them. I don't I don't sell them myself either because I don't like them. But I get the job done. So you just just trim them and your oh, no, okay that goes. I need the white. All right. It's a really horrible day outside. It's pissing down. This should be the last part of the video. And they're in. Uh, let's put the uh, select and start, or whatever they're called now, in. So I just give them a little trim. Probably shouldn't do it the way I'm doing it. But. If you're not capable of doing this, find someone that can. In the phone, my head. Right. Little, little fiddly. And just put that in there. Guide button. Monster one goes in there. Is that everything? That is everything. Right. Make sure the buttons are flat. Don't. When you're doing it, don't put it down. Try and keep it. Because you want. Because if you put it flat, the buttons will be pushed out and you won't notice and you might. Would you more catch him or you don't want to break anything there at the end of the day if you break any part of the board and uh, that's the controller did so let me just uh, yep that's everything right start putting the screws back in that went a bit better than I thought it would that's the wrong screw little screws So the first one, I always put either this one or the one right next to the buttons in, just because it holds it in place. When you're tightening them back up, don't over tighten them, because the thread is only in the board. Just until you sort of feel like it's tight enough. So I've got those two in. Right, test the buttons. Oh, can't test B. Yep, 
Okay, yeah, that's fine. Right. Once you've got this board back on, test B. Make sure. Because that one's obviously connected to that board. I'm not sure where the screws are going. They are so they've got gold contacts around them. Oh, computer's just shut on. So take your time. You won't be in a rush because you won't be recording it. One more there. And one that unscrews. I feel like I'm missing one. Okay. Anyway. And when you put it back together, make sure you line these up. Look connectors, make sure there's no cables in the way, run all the cables, and then just push it back together. It clicks into place. I always put the, the rumble parts back in, but they always fall out. Also have it. Then with the cables out of the way, put the last two screws in. as it should. Right, this one I'm going to put the green sync button in. Right, this is a, one of the hardest bits. You've got to push, push, that, push the button down. Whilst pushing that on, you want to make sure the sync button is in the right place. Because if you get it wrong, you might snap the sync button. Sync button, sorry. On. Works. Okay. In regards to the triggers, uh, the bumpers, most of my controllers I do, I actually prefer the black ones. Just because they're better made. That's why I don't change the triggers either. Um, I know it would look better if the green were in. But... If you're gonna, if you're gonna use it, the greens aren't as good. The aftermarket stuff's not as good. The buttons are fine because at the end of the day, they, they just do a job. But because they're not made exactly the same, I mean, if anything, the green one's slightly shorter. I don't know if I can pick that up on camera. Don't know if you can see that, but the green is slightly shorter. Can't hold it in the right place. Anyway, I'm putting the blacks back in. Right, make sure you're getting around the right way. And this, this, this controller, you put it in there. Put it in there. You want to make sure that the black lever is touching the white button. Just clicks in. Pull the trigger down. Test it. And then get the other one. In twist button. Click. And when you're testing it, pull the triggers down. Only because the controller, the uh, shell actually holds them down. So they go so far. So when when they're out, yeah. Anyway, green thumbsticks. Ooh. I'm just mark that. Black it is. Black one, black one. Um, D-pad. I don't like painting D-pads. Where's the mine? So I normally buy a kit with a D pad in it. Take the uh, surround off, D pad comes out. When they're putting the D pad back in, you want to make sure can I get that, on the other? that the tiniest little nib goes at the bottom. 
It's very important. So make sure that that one is at the bottom. And get the surround. Make sure the surround goes back on. So the bit with the that's the top. That's the bottom. So you just clip that on. Test. And as you can see, the controller is starting to come together. So next stage, flip it over. When you put the back on, make sure you put the battery connectors in. Pull the trigger down. And there you go. And then I always put the centre one in first. It's just the way I do it. Put the five screws back in. Well, if you got this far in the video, I hope you enjoyed it. It's my first video I've shot for YouTube. I shot one years ago with my friend Dave on how to take what was it? How to take the controller apart? He put it on his channel. And it used to be connected to my eBay page. Um, if you watch this and not confident in doing it for yourself, then um, say I'll leave the link of my eBay shop and my Facebook page and my website in the description below. And uh, you can always get us to do them. So we are UK based. I do ship around the world, but I prefer to do it in the UK. Right. Laser clip back on. Right. Make sure you do it all different ways. Make sure it clicks. Um. Yeah. Sticker. That's why I saved it. it just looks better when you put it back in. Back in. Get that a little, little clean. Alright, all the spare bits, they go in a the bag with the rest of the stuff. Let's get some of this out of the way. And all the bits. So there's the controller. Complete. Actually, you should get with it. I always use battery packs, but for this, I just and there you go. I'm gonna stop the flashing because it annoys me. So, just to recap, um, yeah, you're gonna paint your own controller. Just take your time. Don't rush the paint. If you rush the paint, the paint will still be. I don't know if you can see that it's got like a metallic shine to this one. Uh, if you rush the paint, you will. The paint will still be soft when you try and use it. The, the key to painting is drying time. So you've got to let it dry. Um, say so prime it, light coats. Um, prime it. Prime three or four times. If you do 5-6 it's not going to hurt, but you don't want to build the paint up too much around the buttons. If you do build it up and when you're testing it, just get a bit of sandpaper and go around the buttons. And the aftermarket ones are slightly smaller. But sometimes, yeah, the paint does build up. If you're doing lots of layers, I mean, this one's obviously got more layers. Um, so, prime it one day, let it sit for 24 hours. Um, the base colour on, it depends on how fussy you want to be with the base colour. If you're going to do loads of layers or you're going to make it look grubby like this one, then it doesn't hurt it not to be perfect because, you know, this one's meant to be like, worn. And, um, but if you're going to only do one base colour, then I would do, I'd do it until it looks right. But I wouldn't do any more than four, four coats of base colour. This one's had two green and one black with a bit of grey on it, so it's only had three coats. But this one's had what's it? Had? Skin colour, blue yellow. Oh uh, yeah, again, it's only had three. Um, okay. Let it dry. Drying times. Every time you paint it different colour, let it dry for 24 hours. 
put the put the stickers on. You can make your own. Bit of mask and tape. Draw around something. Put it on. Don't let the sticker or mask and tape sit on it for more than I would say two or three days at the most. You just don't want the resin. Um, definitely with vinyl stickers. The vinyl will start to go hard and start to cure, and then the the glue will start to come off, and you don't want to take it off and find the glue on there. If you do, you got to get it off because if you try and put clear on it, it would, it'd go horrible. And then once you painted that, let, let it dry. Let let the paint dry for a couple of days. I'd say two, three days. It's not going to hurt. The longer you leave it, the better. And then clear coat. So this one's they've had. I don't know. Six, seven coats each, light coats, and it'd be very durable. Nothing lasts forever. Like my friend, he wears a wedding ring, and he wears through this part of this control every time. He knows it. I can't do anything about it. Um, yeah. Uh, paints to use. Um, I'm not going to tell you what paints I use, but if you're in the UK, Halfords. You can get Halfords primer, paint, lacquer. Easy, it's all the same brand, it all, it's all designed to work with each other. Same, it applies the same from where you're from. If you go to like an auto place, get paints that are the same make because they're designed to work together. If you're going to buy a paint from this shop and lacquer from that shop, they might not work, they might not cure properly with each other. But I um, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I might do a uh, video of my controllers. I'm going to do one on my desk soon. I think it's quite cool. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.